You're listening to the Wedding Biz Network, the voice of the creative entrepreneur. Come on, no! Hey everybody, it's Andy Kushner, host of The Wedding Biz, and this is another episode of The Next Level, in which I have a guest co-host, and together we suss out some of the highlights of the interview of the week and talk about them in a way that you could hopefully uh, take some advice and some tactical strategies to use to bring your own business to the next level. And before I introduce today's guest co-host, I want to just mention last week's interviews, if you missed them, was David Tutera on Monday. It was a conversation with David Tutera. Uh, just to talk about how he's doing during the pandemic and what he's doing with his business. And then on Wednesday, we talked to Carrie Goldberg. It was a conversation with Carrie uh, to do the same, to check in with her. And both interviews were really, really good. I highly recommend you check them out. And so now, without further ado, I feel like I should have a drum roll, Robert. I'm introducing Robert Sherman, president of Washington Talent and my business partner with Kushner Entertainment. Hey, man. How you doing, Andy? I th- I'm so excited about this. I am too. I love being on your show. And if if you all missed the uh, regular interview of Robert, he was on episode 206, really worth checking out. So the person who we're speaking about today is Joanne Grigoli of Elegant Occasions. Modern Bride Magazine included her as one of their trendsetters of the year, and she was also recently recognized as one of the top 25 most influential wedding planners in the world. And this was a real wide-ranging conversation. I had a really great time with Joanne. Uh, Robert, what did you think? How did you like it? I thought it was fantastic. Uh, she's inspirational. Yeah, she is. She has so much to offer. Uh, I mean, she's really one of the first, if not maybe the first destination planner. She, you know, She's a pioneer. Oh, absolutely. The God, the godmother of destination weddings, I think, is, is what, we, what she said about herself. Yeah, is that and what she said? Before we hit the record button, you pointed out something that was really funny about what she said in the beginning of the interview. Oh, yeah. She had me because my favorite movie of all time is Wedding Crashers. And she, I think she was the original Wedding Crashers. She, yeah, the movie was based on her. Yes, except that she said that she didn't care about the buffets. I, I, I would have cared <laughs> about the buffets. She probably didn't, but I would have. But yeah, I'm trying to remember exactly how she said it. Basically... She, when she was younger, uh, she just would crash weddings, She right? She just like crashed weddings. She loved seeing weddings. Because she said she's obsessed with love. And that's right. What, I mean, come on, that's to do her job. That that says it all. Yeah, it does. Well, you know, in terms of, of some of the highlights that, that really stuck out, in addition to that, I really liked how, and she said it differently than, than others. She talked about how you've got to have a network of vendors um, and you're only as good as your team. So she vets them. And the best way for her to understand what they do and how to assess their skill set and their abilities is that she literally studied each, each field. Remember when she talked about that? Like she didn't, she took classes. She took classes, exactly. Like in floral design, photography, video, right? She took classes. It's the ultimate way to know when you're giving somebody advice. It's the ultimate way to know. It also is the ultimate way to know when you're dealing with a vendor that the vendor's doing the job the the the, the proper way. Well, and to speak our language exactly, and that's that's critical. Yeah, that that, that speaking our language as a vendor myself, you know, you want to have someone that tells you that if someone's going to critique you or tell you how to do something. You want to know that they know something about what you're doing. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And for her to become so well versed in every area, she also talked about how it helps her to be the advocate for her clients to have such a deeper level understanding of what we do. Yeah, that is, I've never met anybody that actually does that. I did, I've never met anybody that actually does it. Now, I, I know when some people, some businessmen try to learn everything they can about their business. And I think that's what she's doing. She's learning everything about her business. Yeah, I thought I thought it was really cool. And by the way, I want I, you know, I, I want to like start this new movement of, of us. Uh, and I don't blame any, anyone for using the word vendors. That's what it's been forever. But I remember it was, I think it was Colin who said um, creative partners. And it's like, I keep forgetting, but I want to, I want, uh, like, come on, everyone, call, call, and call us creative partners. All right. New rule. No more vendors. From now on, it's creative and partners. And no one's fault. That's what it's been for 30 <laughs> years, you know, but we're going to do. Um, but also, you know, another topic that came up uh, that I just knocked me out was how she talked about um, how you got to constantly learn from the younger groups, the younger generations, you know, like at conferences, places like that. But the whole point is to know how does each generation work? What are the differences so that we know how to market to each because you can't market the same way anymore? A- absolutely. You know, it's it's like, like I think she re- referred to the millennials. They're into 
philanthropy and they're into um you know airbnbs versus maybe the baby boomers which are into you know uh the hotels, hotels and rooms they service. want room service and, right and again i don't know about you andy but i don't i never thought about it that way it, no. it, it never crossed my mind like that but it's it's really true you know it's interesting robert because i remember um when when there started to be this shift in the buying market like this is some years ago right i felt i really was kind of stuck i was one of the last ones i i was stuck thinking of of my buyers as they used to be which was mostly the parents remember in the earlier days which are the baby boomers which had a completely different way which lasted for decades but now um they're the parents aren't as involved they're not even always paying anymore well that's joanne pointed that out yeah. she said that it's the millennials that are paying yeah Right. Or or at a minimum, the parents might be contributing, but, but they're the, the, millenni- the millennials are the decision makers. Yeah, right. And that's how you got to know how to market. Right. And they care less. You know, it's funny. They care less about your, your experience and more about what you do for other people that's and, right. and the good that. Yeah, and the good that you provide the community. Yeah. I thought that 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 is really what grabbed my attention, because I mean, look, I've got decades of experience, but she's absolutely right when it comes down to it now when we're selling that doesn't hold the same level of importance that it used to hold. Yeah, that was probably one of the most insightful things that I got from the entire uh, podcast interview with her was the fact that she was able to separate out the different generations and and really discuss marketing. You know, we all think about marketing. We think mm-hmm. about marketing. It's marketing. Right. We're going to market. Right. But it's not like that. It's, it's she she really she really brought drove home the point that we need to market to different people, different ways. Yeah. And I, and that's, a, I think that's a, uh, very insightful. Yeah. Understanding. Um, I think she summed it up as understanding how they think and otherwise, how, how are we going to be able, uh, to sell? I mean, this is how the next generation is buying. We got to understand really what they're thinking, what deep down it is. Do you like music? Do you love music? Okay, stupid questions. Here's the point. You can now hear conversations with some of the biggest music industry professionals around, including artists, songwriters, record company executives, recording engineers, and more. And it's my other podcast called The Music Makers. You can find it on your cell phone's podcast app or at themusicmakers.com. Again, that's The Music Makers. And also, you know, one of the the last highlights I wanted to bring up was I, I loved how she talked about. Uh, well, let, let me reframe it this way: so many of us during this pandemic have obviously we've slowed down. We're all rethinking. You know, what can we do? And there's this big word: reinvent ourselves, right? And like, how can we reinvent ourselves? And even for myself, that's how I frame it for myself: what else can I do? How can I reinvent myself? And she said, rather than reinventing herself, she refocused her priorities. And you remember her example. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it was all about the masks that she, I mean, I thought that was incredible. Basically, for those of you who didn't hear the interview, and if you didn't, you should go back and listen to the whole thing. But basically, she got together a lot of mothers And they all started to sew and make masks. And she basically has, I believe, I think she said around 500 people sewing around the clock. And thus far, they have made 50,000 masks that they're shipping all around the country. Well, I can attest, she sent me some masks. And I currently, I wear a Joanne mask. And I'm proud to do it. The sewing angels, they are angels. Yeah. And I'm proud to wear it. And, you know, she started this, you know, I guess to protect, you know, know, she's got the six children. Yeah. More power to her. That's amazing. That's amazing. I know. I have four and I can't imagine. Four. I've got one. I can't imagine Uh, three. She is an incredible person. And, and, you know, she was protecting her daughter who's on the front lines. That's right. And that's how she started this. But, you know, I think it really gave her, it refocused her. And, uh, and I, I think it was a great thing. I think what she's doing is fantastic. Well, and she also talked about how she's helping people. Um, in homeless sh- shelters, especially women in homeless shelters and battered women, which yeah. was really moving to me. She did mention her GoFundMe page, and uh, we're, I, again, I'm, I, I know I'm going to I'm going to donate to the GoFundMe page. She mentioned it for to help support you know the the shipping costs that she has for the masks. So she has a, a page set up. Uh, I highly recommend people to go to go give to that. I know after hearing this, I didn't know she had it. I'm going to go give something for it. Yeah, it's it's uh, just so everyone knows, it's sewingangels.org. Again, sewingangels.org, and the GoFundMe that's listed there 
is called Frontlines Wing Angels. Did I get that right? Frontlines Wing Angels, um, which is really to help defer the shipping costs. Exactly. Because you know? she she doesn't charge anything for this. This is all done with her and the volunteers. Yeah. I mean, and, and you know, you could tell, I could tell the passion with her. I mean, she talked about how she's really feeling useful. And again, to me, that was just, it was a different angle on on how most of us, including me, again, are thinking about how do I reinvent? How do I reinvent? Well, it, it makes me think the way she put it. Let me think about what my priorities are. It, like, there's a difference there. It is. It, it 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 is. And I think what she said. She goes, you know, we're we're all going to work again. And you know what? What you give back, and you'll feel better. And and it. I think we all. I think all of us inside we know that. Mm-hmm. It just. It was nice to be reminded. And her her podcast interview with you reminded me of that. Give back, and you'll feel better. Yeah, you True know what? Words. It, it's it's all about being of service. You know, which I mean, and what we do in our industry in the end is being of service. Um, but I like taking it to that to that other level. So, well, that's all we have time for today. You know, I want to thank everyone for listening. Um, be sure to check out Joanne's site, which is Elegant Occasions by Joanne Grigoli. Again, Elegant Occasions by Joanne Grigoli dot com. Her social media handles on Instagram is Joanne Grigoli. On Facebook, it's Elegant Occasions, Inc. And all of this is in the show notes. So if you all are not catching it, go to the show notes on your cell phone podcast app or theweddingbiz.com. And also for Robert. I mean, Robert, thanks again, man, for being on the show. Always love having you around. Hey, anytime. And I appreciate being here. Thank you. Yeah. And check out Robert's sites, uh, two sites. First of all, WashingtonTalent.com. Again, WashingtonTalent.com. And then we are business partners Uh, for Kushner Entertainment at kushnerentertainment.com. And we'll catch you all next week on The Wedding Biz.